is going to be talking to you about points of concurrency. Here are some basic vocab terms that you're going to need to know. On your sheet of paper, you do not have to write it word for word. Write it so that you will remember it or put it in your own terms. There's two vocab words. The first one is concurrent. Concurrent is when three or more lines, these lines can be lines, rays, or segments that intersect at one point, and these are said to be concurrent when those three lines or more lines will intersect at that point. Points of concurrency, this is the point where the three lines will intersect. If you need to pause the video to get these written down, please feel free to do so. The first section, section number one, we're going to talk about perpendicular bisectors. A perpendicular bisector, this is a line, segment, or ray that passes through the midpoint and is perpendicular to the side being bisected. So for example, if you have a triangle, you would want, want to find the midpoint of that line and then you are going to draw the line that's perpendicular to that point. But perpendicular bisectors do not have to go through the vertex. make note of this so when we work with these in class that you know that it does not have to go to the vertex. Again, if you need to pause the video at any time, feel free to do so. If you were to draw a triangle and calculate or draw the perpendicular bisectors of each one of those sides of the triangle, you're going to notice that those three perpendicular bisectors are intersecting. This first diagram you have an acute triangle. The acute triangle is highlighted in red. And then the highlights in yellow, those are your perpendicular bisectors and that's where they're intersecting. This point of intersection is going to be inside of the triangle. So if I were to move that triangle around and create another acute triangle, those perpendicular bisectors are going to stay inside of that triangle. The perpendicular bisectors intersection or that point of concurrency is always going to be different for whatever type of triangle that you have. The next one, the right triangle. This right triangle, the point of concurrency or where those three perpendicular bisectors intersect is going to be actually on the hypotenuse. It's going to always stay on the side of the triangle. Now if you were to create an obtuse triangle, you're going to notice that your obtuse triangle is also highlighted in red. The dotted lines are your perpendicular bisectors. Notice that that point of concurrency is now outside of those two triangles. So on your worksheet, when you fill in the location, for an acute triangle, the point of concurrency is going to be inside of that triangle no matter where or no matter what kind of acute triangle that you create. If you create a right triangle, that point of concur concurrency is going to be on the hypotenuse. And then for your obtuse triangle, that is going to be outside of your triangle. So no matter what kind of obtuse triangle you create, that point of concurrency will be on the outside. Here is another example of a uh, point of concurrency. The dotted lines are your perpendicular bisectors, and then the solid lines are where those three points of intersections create the circumcenter. So when we say what is the point of concurrency for perpendicular bisectors, you are going to recognize that point to be the circumcenter. What are some important things that you need to remember about the, this point of concurrency? Notice how we have a triangle here. This triangle has also been created with the perpendicular bisectors. So all the perpendicular bisectors are being um, subtracted. And then that point of concur concurrency is your perpendicular bisector. If we were to hide all of that information, go to the figure on the right, you're going to notice that you can draw a circle around that triangle that you've created. And the highlighted lines, or the bold lines, these are those three perpendicular bisectors that we were talking about. That This is going to be your circumcenter. And what you should notice about that circumcenter is it's the radii of the green circle that we just drew around that triangle. What do you notice about the radii of a circle? Well, the radii of a circle are always going to be equal. 
So the important thing that you need to remember about the circum center is that it's equidistant from the vertices of your triangle. We're going to use that tomorrow when we do the investigation. So if you have a triangle and you have a circum center, that means the circle has been cir circumscribed outside of that triangle, and those perpendicular bisects or intersections are going to be equal. If you need to pause the video to catch up, please feel free to do so. Section number two is the angle bisector. Well, what is an angle bisector? This is just a ray that's going to split an angle in half. The location of an acute triangle, right triangle, and obtuse triangle, that point of concurrency you're going to notice is always staying inside of the triangle. So it doesn't matter what kind of triangle that you create with angle bisector, that point of concurrency is always going to be inside of that triangle. So that's the thing that you're going to notice about your location. Here's another diagram. What the dotted lines represent are the angle bisectors. And then those angle bisectors are being intersected at that green dot. That green dot, that point of concurrency, is considered to be the in-center. So whenever I say angle bisectors, you will be responsible for knowing that that is the in-center. What you're also going to notice is if we draw the perpendicular distance from the in-center to the side of the triangle, you're going to notice that all three of those sides are congruent. So all of these solid green lines are going to be congruent. So the important thing that you must remember about the in-center is that it's equidistant from the sides of the triangle. And the reason being, this time, this is the in-center, we can draw a circle inside of the triangle. So what I have on the left is the triangle that's drawn for you. All of this, the angle bisectors are in there. Here is your in-center. When we draw that, tri or that circle around or in that triangle and we hide everything else, you are going to notice this is what's left on the right. We have our circle. We have the in-center which is the red dot in the middle. And then notice that these solid lines, those are also the radii of the circle that we inscribed inside that triangle. What do you know about a, a circle and its radii? Well, all the radii have to be congruent. So that is why this is very important. From the in center, it's equidistant to all of the sides. Now you need to make sure that all of these sides are perpendicular to the radii. If it's not perpendicular to the radii, then that's not a true in center. If you need to pause the video to catch up, please feel free to do so. This is the end of the first video that you'll be responsible for tomorrow, Tuesday, December 2nd. I will also put up the second video. If you want to watch the second video and get that down for tomorrow's homework, please feel free to do so.